Where's the video? Nice to see you too. Friday, I need the team reveal. Where is it? I've been working. Just you work so so everybody works. Come on, where's the video? One of the most important things in this game week is your decision in relation to Bakayo Saka. Saka has been the talk of the town. Will he play? Will he not play? Is he injured? Is he fit? Who knows? Well, Mikel Arteta seemingly doesn't know. From the quotes that has been coming out, he was asked and said he hasn't been able to participate in the session when talking about training. He also added if he was a doubt for the Bournemouth game and he said yes, possibly yes. So if you're looking at somebody like Saka, it's become a real decision that you have to make. Are you going to keep him? Are you going to sell him? Are you going to bring in somebody like Madison or Son? Are you going to bring in Bowen for a one-game fixture against Sheffield United? These are all things that now we have to consider. Looking the at Kyle, Saka, Saka, Saka has been, been doing his best Reese James, James impression, impression. We're posting on and Instagram, trying to, trying to be cryptic. We're posting up a story and on his Instagram. Yeah, fair play. He's learning from the best in here. Video. But still, there are doubts about his fitness. When questioned about Saka it today, been, that his Nikola. Arteta had this to say. When talking about a few players, he said that Rice hasn't trained yet and a few others like Martinelli, Trossard, they also haven't trained. And then he said with Saka, same situation. So it's one of those where if he doesn't start, I don't think he'll play. And Bournemouth really feels like a game that Arsenal could potentially risk not starting Saka in. But we all know that Arsenal can't drop points against Man City if they want to win the Premier League. So, if Saka's fit, I think he might play. Now on to the team, as we normally start with the team, but I've decided to change it up this week because, uh, as you might hear from my raspy voice, I'm a little bit sick. Sick in the head, sick, sick in general. Sanchez got four points this week. Chelsea don't look great defensively. Malo Gusta got sent off as well, and... I just think you can spend a billion. They might need to spend another billion getting the defense and the midfield and everything fixed. But yeah, Sanchez is still ticking along nicely. He's going to get more save points. I'm not too sure about the clean sheets, though. In defense, then, there's Ruben Diaz, Stupinan, and Trippier. Trippier, chef kisses, 18 points. When you looked at the team there, eight goals, eight different goal scorers. And Trippier didn't score a goal, but he still managed to come out with the most amount of points with the clean sheet, the three bonus points, and the three assists. Legendary. A Stupinan as well. Brighton's fixtures are turning, and turning bad. But a Stupinan still seems to be picking up points, even though he doesn't seem to be picking up clean sheet points. He got an assist in this game and, well, didn't keep a clean sheet as they lost, as they won 3-1. Ruben Diaz as well finally keeps a clean sheet after blank, after blank, after blank, and pain, after pain, and pain. And I do believe that because of Rodri's red card, that's why they kept the clean sheet. They had to be less expansive, less free roaming, less high up the pitch, which definitely benefited them defensively because it just meant they kept the ball more than the attack so much. It's like Nottingham Forest as well, as much as they wanted to try. You're not, you're not scoring against Man City when they're in that sort of mood. And next up, I'm changing it up also a little bit more this week. I'm going to ask you to subscribe as we are trying to get, get a grand total of two and a half thousand subscribers by any undefined date. So next up is the midfield. As you can see, Rashford, I would be chuffed if he got more than one or two and he got three. So happy enough with that. And Buemo as well. One point. What are you doing, man? Odegaard as well didn't have the greatest of game weeks. Ah, See, the thing is with Arsenal, I still think they're going to come good, but Odegaard hasn't been creating the chances. Uh, but you know what? He's not injured, and that's worth its weight in gold nowadays. Saka as well got 13 points, and if that's his last act for me prior to being sold, I'll be pretty happy with that. So... It seems like Saka sort of carried my team last week. He did get a goal. He got an assist and the three bonus points against Spurs in what was a pretty good game to all. Odegaard got the yellow, obviously, and then Brian and Buemo got a silly yellow against Everton. I don't really know what to make of Brentford right now. If Buemo wasn't already in my team, I wouldn't be bringing him in. But 
It's just sort of hard to tell. I think Brentford are one of those teams that are always going to be good. He did still get an XG of 0.16 and an XA of 0.18. So in another game, he would probably have done better. I think if you look at his first two games, you're thinking, wow, this guy's going to score so many points, but he just hasn't as of late. Then onto the forward line. It's nice to have Morris before everybody else brought him in. And you know what? It's even nicer that he scored nine points. It means I don't have to think about bringing him in. in uh, bring him in. It's a bit of a tongue twist there. And he got me nine points before it. As well as that, Ollie Watkins, I've taken a 0.1 on him over the last while, losing value in him. And now he's been transferred in. So I'm quite happy with that. He's been one of the most consistent players in the game. He's gotten, he hasn't blanked apart from one game against Liverpool. It's assist, 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 assist. He finally scored. So that's one goal and four assists in six games. It's not bad. His form is 5.3, which means he's averaging that a game. And if you look at their fixtures, the next games against Brighton, who aren't great at keeping clean sheets. Then it's Wolves, West Ham, Luton, Forest, Fulham. Those are nice games, and that's a good run of good run of fixtures. So he's the kind of player, along with Matt, along with Matty Cash and maybe Douglas Louise, who you should be targeting to bring in. I only say Douglas Louise because he's on penalties. Erling Haaland as well. What's happening there? <laughs> he's not scoring goals, but another game where he still scores. He's consistent. He's got fifty-one points out of the six game weeks, but in reality, he probably should have much, much more, shouldn't he? The thing is, he's getting 8.5 uh, points a game. He's a guaranteed captaincy shout, and his ownership is 92.4%. He's the kind of player that if you go against as a captaincy option, you're living life on the edge, aren't you? So anyway, looking at that then, my team scored a total of 82 points, which is lovely. It's brought us up to 409 points, and it's uh, almost in the top 50k teams in the world. Nice. Team scored a total of 82 points, which is lovely. It's brought us up to 409 points, and it's an almost in the top 50k teams in the world. Nice. Then, comparing it to the uh, league standings of the content creators, top of the league, boys, top of the league. We've taken first place from Fran, and you know what? Nine points ahead. I remember during the week, Gianni was slagging me about my rank because he scored so highly, and he didn't say anything back after I said, on top so yeah another good game week and now the decision making is the fun part the real question that a lot of people are gonna talk to you about this game week is should i bring in a luton or burnley defender and uh, hands down i'm just gonna say no i know they've got more games but in combined looking at these two teams both of them have almost a 60 percent chance of keeping no clean sheets over the two games so that is worse than a lot of teams already in the league just from one game. And I know they play each other, but Everton are probably going to score against Luton and Burnley are probably going to concede quite a few goals against Newcastle. So let's say you brought in somebody like Kabore from Luton. He's probably going to not keep a clean sheet in either game. And then for Burnley as well, against... Against Newcastle, you could be going into minus territory for your defenders. If they get a yellow card, they concede four goals, it's minus one point. So for me, it's just a swift avoid. Looking at the midfielders from both sides too, nobody really interests me. So the only player that I could really say that I'm interested in is Morris. So, you know, don't bother. Don't go there. If you're like double game weeks are normally fun, but they're not normally fun when the teams are looting and Burnley. Maybe if you've got a team that's playing one of them, like, but not when they're that. Here, looking at the probability of keeping at least one clean sheet this game week, as I've said already, there are five teams which are more likely to keep a clean sheet than Luton and Burnley, and they only play one game week. Everton have the highest chance because they're playing Luton. Man City, Man City are Man City. Newcastle, West Ham, Man United, they're all more likely. Would I back Man United to keep a clean sheet? No, I wouldn't because they've got about four defenders available to them. But yeah, Man City are always going to be one of the most likely and Newcastle as well because they're just so solid defensively. Looking at the most, the best, or well, moving on from this, we'll move on to the expected points. 
Um, the most unsurprisingly to absolutely everybody, it's Erling Haaland at number one, but then Morris is number two. Morris is the kind of player that I would recommend bringing in. Luton are not bad from home, and yeah, I just think he's a good pick. So looking at these uh, first four players, I have all of them in the team, so you know what? It's not looking bad, is it? So yeah, I'm going to stroke my own ego there. So yeah, the most obvious captaincy the option this week is Erling Haaland. Morris as well is a good shout, but I'll be honest with you. I think he's probably only going to score if they get a penalty. So he's probably only going to get three, four points. But then if he gets a penalty, he might get the three bonus points. So I'd say his ceiling is a lot lower than Haaland. Realistically, I think Haaland could score two or three against Wolves. Wolves will just capitulate. And... I think Morris probably will score maybe one goal, two goals max, but most likely he'll score no goals in either game. So Haaland's upside is much higher. The only thing that Morris has, I would say, is more minutes to score in. But realistically, would you expect Morris to score as many goals in 180 minutes as Haaland would in 90? Probably not, would you? So yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. Everybody, transfer, 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 oh. everybody. So the the tricky thing here now is that Okayo Saka is going to cause me a headache. I'm not going to have that headache in goal because Sanchez is starting and Turner is on the bench. But the main headache that I have is I want if Saka is injured, I want to bring in Son or Madison. And the only way I can bring in... Son is by selling Saka and selling into a defender, and that defender would probably be a stupid one. And my logical train of thought was to move in somebody like Botman, because he'll keep a clean sheet against Burnley. Uh, so I'd bring in Botman for a stupid on, use my money in the bank, add that to the 0 0.4 that I'd make on the sale of a stupid on. But a stupid on has a doubt about him as well as. How has come out and said that he's injured. So right now my plan is to bring in Botman for a stupid on, get that little bit extra money in the bank, and then also sell Saka, bring in Sun Young Min, and be happy with my life. But like looking at that, then the midfield's pretty strong. Rashford against Crystal Palace and Buemo against Nottingham Forest. These are teams that you really want. As well as that, I've also got um, Saliba, Cash, Sar on the bench. So Saliba would probably start if he's fit. So it's just there's headaches. There's headaches to be had there. As well as that, Manny Cash isn't a bad option either. So right now, my plan would be to go with this. And then my front line would be the same as last week. I'd have Watkins, I'd have Haaland, and I'd have Morris. But you see, I... I'm, I'm, I think it's a bit of a headache. Right now, this will be my team, but I haven't made those transfers yet. Saliba's a doubt, Saka's a doubt, and I do think we might get a bit more news before deadline. I, I look at Son, and I don't think that Son is a better pick than, than Saka for one game week. I would much rather have Saka against Bournemouth. So right now, if I am not making a move for Son to or Saka to Son and then Botman in for uh what's his name, a stupid and I would most likely end up transferring in somebody else. I have two free transfers. So it might be something as boring as transferring out Burn uh Turner and then bringing in Ariola, just not to waste the transfer. But right now this is my plan. If we get more news for Saka, then I'll consider selling him. But right now, I haven't made these moves, just, to, just for clarity. And then also, finally moving on from the, If you want to know what my chances are, I'll share them on Twitter tomorrow. So don't worry about it. It's odds on FPL. I'll share it all there. You don't have to worry about that. It will all be there. But the only chances I'll be making would be selling a goalkeeper or... Selling a goalkeeper, or selling Son, uh, Saka for Son, and then selling a Supernan for Botman. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things there that are dependent on injury news, and I don't want to make an early transfer just for the sake of it. But this is going to be my team. Sorry, I'm waffling a little. 
Uh, as you might have heard, my throat's a bit dry because I don't think it's COVID. I've done tests, but yes, anyway, that is it. I shall now move on to my captaincy selection. And surprise, it is none other than the boy, the man, Erling Haaland. Sorry, I cannot sing. Um, but yeah, anyway, Haaland is Haaland. As I've said, it's him or Morris. Morris will be the vice captain. And to be honest, Haaland's going to score more points than Morris. Morris just stinks of that stinky championship player who comes up and gets minus one point or one point and injured after the first game. So, yeah, if you go for Morris, good luck. I don't think it will pay off. Anyway, yeah, so that's been the video. If you've liked it, don't forget to click like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will be graceful and leave you a comment back. So, yeah, that's me, me. Hello, goodbye. Love you. Bye.